In today's video, I'm gonna share some of the things that I no longer buy as a hoarder. Ta-da! I have a confession to make. I'm the biggest hoarder that I know. I love to hoard things. It gives me this gratification. I don't know why, I just like to store things up, hoard things. I feel that, I just feel more secure when I have enough stuff in the house. But I also know that it's not healthy because it's hard to keep it organized and financially, sometimes it's just not worth it to make that purchase. In today's video, I'm gonna share some of the things that I no longer buy as a hoarder. Ta-da! Before we start, I just want to do a disclaimer that just because I no longer buy them doesn't mean that, let's say, if I really, really need one, I don't buy them at all. It's just say that I don't buy them regularly unless I really, really need them. Another thing is that the purpose of this video is not to shame anyone who loves to purchase them because I love to purchase a lot of things that a lot of people actually don't think it's worth it. I just want to make this video to reflect on my own purchases and maybe in inspire you to think and rethink about your purchases. Maybe sometimes it will save us a little bit of coins back to our wallet. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The first category of the things I no longer buy or no longer regularly buy is jewelry. Ta-da! Just to make this video, I put on earrings. If you go to my other videos, you will see that I actually don't wear jewelries a lot. Okay, so as a girl, I also like fashion. I like accessories. I love things that make me look good. But over the time, I realized that a lot of the times when I purchase jewelries, either I lose them or I forget about them. Or sometimes I go to the gym or yoga studio with my jewelries. They're just so Daggling that make me uncomfortable and sometimes when I'm typing rigorously And I realize my bracelet is always ding, 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 Clutching the desk so I stop wearing jewelry in general from time to time if I'm going to an event Or if I'm sitting down here to film a video I do take out my old jewelries and to put them on and these are like five dollars so Overall, I stopped purchasing jewelries for the past two years and I felt like I still have enough jewelries from the past. So here's the deal, if you really need a pair of something or a necklace for an event, I do think it's okay to buy affordable jewelry just for the appearance, the fashion, but I just don't think it's that worth it to spend hundreds of dollars on a super sparkly ruby and no longer wear them. So I also don't like to wear my wedding ring and engagement ring because when I do yoga, the ring just hurt me. So overall, I'm just not a jewelry flashy person. So I also no longer purchase jewelry. But if I do go to China, some of those accessories are really cheap, like one to five dollars. I do stock things up a little. Overall, I have a very low budget when it comes to accessories and jewelry because I feel like they don't have real use towards them and I lose them and I feel bad so I just no longer purchase them. People have been gifting me presents that are like earrings or necklace so I do keep those presents and sometimes I wear the bracelet because my best friend has the exact same one it reminds me of her so I do accept those gifts when it's like something really really special but I just don't think that it's financially healthy for me to go out and buy so much of them if I don't really wear them on daily basis. Next item on the list is also an interesting category is that I no longer purchase wallets. I feel like last time I bought a wallet it was like five years ago. Yeah, five years ago I did buy a wallet but I haven't been using a wallet for so long. So the reason why I no longer purchase wallets is because Ta-da! I have a phone case. Okay, this is really good. I've been purchasing and repurchasing different phone cases at a lower price between $10 to $20. They're definitely way more affordable than wallets because if you want to buy a good enough wallet, they're usually between $50 to $80. They're pretty expensive depending on the brand. So 
I really like this one. This is a phone case that I got from online. I'm not gonna show my ID. So it basically has this kind of like card where you can put your cards right here. And it also has this. So this one is basically like a clutch that you can put some other cards or other IDs or other cash. So basically, I feel like wallets are too much to me. If I have to leave the house, if I have to bring my phone and my wallet, it's just two items. But in this case, I have one item and then I put a strap. There we go. And then I can just have two hands at my dispense and this wallet slash phone case will just dagger right here. So I recommend you to get one of those phone cases and it's definitely very life-changing. Um, you can get it from Amazon, eBay, Alibaba and things like that. And I think there are also more expensive ones but these are really cheap online and I really like the fact that I can put so many cards and things like that in. So I just no longer purchase wallets in general and I feel like this is one for all. Um, the third category is something that I learned during this pandemic quarantine. When the quarantine first started, I felt like I don't have I felt like I wanted to be safe, so I try to, I try not to go to grocery stores a lot. As a result, I purchased a lot of frozen meat. I bought a lot of frozen steak, uh, ribs, and everything. But honestly. I only cooked half of them. I still have the other half of frozen meat in my freezer. And honestly, now that I'm back to the office to work, I have to commute every day, I don't have time to cook anymore. So it's just take forever for you to defrost something and then cook them, it's just not gonna worth it. So I feel like in the future, I'm not gonna store things, stock up things, just because, you know, I don't have time to go because I forget about the ribs that I bought. And then I wanted to make them, I've been wanting to make them for a long time, but I just don't have time. So overall, I do think just purchase the things that I need for the whole week instead of like thinking, oh, I'm gonna buy meat and freeze them in the freezer for a month. I just feel like it didn't work for me and I still need to find a way to cook all the things in the freezer. So I definitely don't think it's a good idea to hoard them anymore. Lesson learned. The next category is the designer bags for the look or fashion. Um, I think when I first came to America, I felt like, wow, there's so many designer bags that are cheaper because once they're imported to China, they became more expensive. So there were two years I was buying things that has a name and I felt like, oh, they're so pretty and it's trendy and this bag is so trendy because like this year it's just great and it goes with this type of clothing and it has this brand it's good quality yeah they are pretty good quality but at the end of the day are they worth the price no because you're buying for the design and you're buying for the brand you're not really buying for the actual purse or bag so eventually i'm so over it right now I, now i learned a lesson i don't think it's worth it to buy them for the fashion i definitely think that certain brands have really good quality tote bags and purses and backpacks and i do buy them for the utility of those handbags i don't buy them for the fashion or for the brand anymore because i feel like it's just not worth an investment because after a couple of years, there's gonna be new things and the things you spend $200 on is no longer trendy. And what are you gonna do if you don't feel like it's great for bringing them to work, it's not great for holding the laptop, I kind of feel like it's wasted. So I still buy the tote bags for my favorite brands just because I like to use tote bags for carrying my laptop, but I no longer buy designer bags just for the fashion, just because they're trendy. And honestly, there are so many bags that are also very trendy. They fit into the particular trend, but they're not designer brands. That makes them so much cheaper. You can buy a bag for $30 instead of $300. They look exactly the same, except for that particular brand. And I would just go for the $30. And people actually are more interested in my bags that are non-branded they're like this is so unique i love this color i never saw it because you know it's just anonymous brand that i found somewhere online but they're actually really great so i no longer buy those things and my wallet and bank account definitely happy about it wait 
I don't even have a wallet. My phone case and my bank account are definitely really happy about it. The next category is about watches. Ta-da! I used to really look into the watches with like different colors, different brands, um, different metal bands and everything. And I used to love them because they're really great accessories to put into your fashion. But now I feel like I am more into the actual function of the watches. And there are definitely different watches that are really good looking that has really good function. The functions that I look for in a watch is if they track the steps, if I can read a message, if I can actually like, oh, tell things easily. If I can track my physical states and my lifestyle, my sleep, I do think they're really good lifestyle items. So I really, really, really love my Fitbit. Yeah, but I do think if you kind of need watches for occasions, just buy one really good watch that holds its value and then wear it for different occasions. Um, but instead of buying different watches from different fashion trends from different brands that are like 100 200 dollars it's just not really worth it i just get one that's very functional or maybe one in the future if i want to wear it for like occasions but if you do want to buy a really good watch buy one that holds its value so We'll get into that later. The next category in the list is actually something I'm super guilty for, and this is to go coffee when not needed. So I understand from time to time if we are, if I'm going to an airport, if I'm feeling really, really sleepy and I'm actually out, uh, I do need to go to Starbucks or any coffee shop, or sometimes I will go to a coffee shop to work, so I will order a cup of coffee, sometimes to-go cup, but overall, I just don't think it's good to buy to-go coffee just for the sake of to-go coffee, because I've seen people who drive to Starbucks, buy a coffee, and drive back home. I'm like, why don't you just make coffee at home? So I do have an espresso machine, which makes my life easier, but before I would just use K-Cup or regular coffee maker. So my coffee ranges from 20 cents to 75 cents, but that's way cheaper than the to-go coffee. And if you really like the Starbucks ones, you you can actually get the syrup or get the cream, especially the pumpkin spice ones. Sometimes I will buy the cream or half and half with different flavors at home So we can definitely make them at home uh, Again, this is not saying to-go coffee is no 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 But ever since I reduced my consumption of to-go coffee and tried to make them at home Or make them at home and bring them to work and things like that I do feel like my credit card, my bank account is happier. I do feel like I saved at least $30 per month and actually yearly that's like $300. And that's actually a lot of money if you want to buy something that actually has great use and lasts for a long time. The next category is about clothing. So I stopped buying jeans. Um, I stopped buying jeans for one, we're not allowed to wear jeans at work. So to me, I will only be able to wear jeans on the weekend. And on the weekend, I'll wear leggings or dress or a skirt. So definitely between leggings and jeans, I would prefer leggings. And then jeans are, I used to be able to wear jeans to work, but now I'm no longer allowed to. So I feel like, yes, denim items are definitely really trendy. They never go out of trend. They're really great if you want to mix and match different shirts and blouse and things like that. But eventually, I feel like although they look good, I don't have the opportunity to wear them. So again, I see a lot of times I got influenced by a lot of blogs and online YouTube videos about how to match denim with different items. So I buy the denims, they do look good, but then I wear them like five times a year. And it's just not a purchase that I should allow myself to make. So in the future, if I am allowed to wear jeans at work, maybe I will buy jeans again. But overall, I just don't think it's a great purchase anymore and I still have the jeans that I purchased from before. So in the future, if I run into a really, really comfortable jeans that are really, really good looking, that's on sale, maybe I'll buy them just for the holidays, the vacation times and things like that. But in general, I will try to be more mindful every time I see a pair of jeans that I want. Rethink if I really need it. Can I really wear it? How frequently am I going to wear it to really evaluate its value? And that speaks to the next category. The next category is actually um, something that I tried 
I try no longer buy. Like I still buy them from time to time, but I try not to buy them as much as possible. So this category is non-professional and non-sporty clothes, like this. Well, actually I can wear this to work, I think because it's a long dress. So currently we have a dress code at work, so I have to dress a certain way. And then when I get home, I just want to get really comfortable. And I really want to put fitness clothes because every time you put sporty clothes, you want to do sports, right? Because you're ready. So I no longer buy things that I cannot do sports in or wear to work. Sometimes if some dress looks really nice, um, but they're a little bit too short to wear it to work, I would still buy it just because I want to wear it on the weekends. But overall, I try to reduce the purchase when it comes to non-professional, non-sporty clothes because when am I gonna wear them? So when you evaluate its value, even if it's only $10, if you don't get to use them, it's a lot of money. If you spend $20 on something you wear every single day, that's of great value because that just means that you no longer need to buy more clothes to wear on those days. Genius logic. The next category is makeup remover wipes. Ta-da! Okay, so this is something I still buy from time to time. If I actually have to travel, I do think they're very handy. But I used to use makeup remover wipes every single day, and they're really, really good. But I just feel like it's a lot of waste, and they're actually really pricey. So later, I started to buy those makeup remover cleansing balms from Sephora, and those things are even more pricey. But I realized that for $30 I spend on a cleansing balm, I can use it for three to four months. Versus on a makeup remover wipe, yes, they're $5, but I only use it for 10 days. Although they're cheaper, five to $10, you actually run out them really quickly. Because sometimes you need more than one wipe if you put a lot of makeup. So sometimes I run them through really quickly and it actually gets more expensive than the actually luxurious makeup cleansing balm. So I would just prefer the makeup cleansing balm because they work so nice, no quickly compared to the makeup remover wipe. So luxurious, better value, not so much luxurious, and it's a lot of waste as well for the environment. I'll definitely go for the cleansing balm. So I only buy remover wipes when it comes to travel purposes if I am not allowed to bring any cleansing oils and balms and things like that. But for now, I haven't been purchased them for the past nine months. I'm still using the ones that I got for a long, long time ago. And I feel like I feel so much happier because my trash can is no longer that full. It has another benefit as well. The last category is also with fashion. So before I used to buy a lot of things from Forever 21, H&M and honestly I'm no longer forever 21. Forever 21 is not real. You're not gonna be forever 21. I'm 30 this year. A lot of times you find things that are quick fashion from forever 21. They're really trendy this year with the same fashion, follow the same fashion trend with a lower value. So instead of purchasing a dress for $60, you can spend $10. But honestly, first of all, it's quick fashion. Next year it will be different. Second of all, there is a reason why that dress is $60 because it's actually more comfortable. There are definitely dresses that I wear for like over five years and I still feel so comfortable in them. Versus there are also dresses that I wear them for seven days and I feel like mm, every time after I wash them, they shrink those fuzzy balls or kind of the structure of the dress kind of shifted a little bit or the material just not that great. After 10 years of being in the 20s, I finally learned my lesson. Now I'm 30 and I'm, I'm gonna buy things that I found more comfortable and things that are more suitable for me instead of quick fashion trends and instead of those super cheap material type of fashion outfit clothing item. Instead of purchasing things for $10, wear it once. I buy things that are $30, but I wear it for three years. So definitely the other one is better value. So I learned this lesson the hard way. I had to declutter so many of my clothes out. And at the end, I felt like things that I spent a little bit more money on and also things that I feel like more suitable for me, not so much following a trend, I actually wear them for a longer time because even though the trend is no longer there, 
you'll enjoy it and you look great in them. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video can be helpful to you. I hope it inspire you to rethink about your purchases. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell. And let me know in a comment, what are the items that you no longer buy? So maybe you can inspire me a little bit more. So that's it for today. Thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!